This summer, we're on a mission, and that mission is to show our little Texas family some of the most epic mountains that Colorado has to offer. So we're hitting pause on our DIY projects for the summer, packing up the magical minivan, and driving far beyond the flat landscapes that we're used to seeing, and traveling over 2,000 miles on an epic road trip to Colorado. This trip has been full of planned and unplanned adventures, but best of all, we've been blowing our kids minds. What y'all think about that trail? That was That's awesome. Fun. That was my favorite trail that we've ever been on. So welcome to the Summer Adventure Series. Really quick, we want to say thanks to MD Hair for sponsoring today's video. If you've been with us a while, you might have heard us talk about how I deal with an autoimmune disease, and one of the more annoying side effects of that is some hair thinning and hair loss. This is where MD Hair comes in. It's the world's first medical grade hair regrowth treatment customized to the exact cause and type of hair loss. The website uses a quiz and a scalp picture analysis to customize each kit, which means you'll get the right ingredients for your needs. At the end of the quiz, you actually take a picture of your scalp, which is then analyzed by AI, and this will make it really easy to actually see your results as time goes on. The treatment kit includes several different products, each with their own effect and different natural ingredients inside each product. Each product is formulated with FDA approved medical ingredients and botanical ingredients to deliver the best possible results. Plus, all customers receive unlimited access to one-on-one -on -one chat support with a dermatologist and free fine-tuning of the medications formulation. I really love the way all the products smell. They have this really light earthy scent that I just find really pleasant. The shampoo and conditioner left my hair soft without weighing it down which is nice because I do have finer hair and I don't like a lot of heavy product. The serum is also really lightweight and easy to use. Once I started adding even just the collagen it had like a crazy effect on my hair and my hairdresser even noticed a lot of regrowth and she asked me what I was doing different and it was just the collagen. The reviews for the whole kit are pretty incredible and so I'm excited to use all of it together and really see results. Right now you can use our specific code to get 70% off your first month of customized products so be sure to click that link in the description below. As the sun rose we enjoyed one last beautiful morning at our Cimarron cabin. And we decided that on our last morning here, we were going all out on breakfast. Good morning, beautiful. Good morning. But finally, after a long stay here, we were ready to load everything up and head on to our next adventure. But we'll never forget the memories that we made in Cimarron including a trip to Ure, the Switzerland of America, where we hiked some epic trails and then got up close and personal with a breathtaking waterfall. And how could we forget the most remote and beautiful hike that we've ever taken? This is genuinely one of the coolest hikes that I think I've ever done. And lastly, how could we forget the mysterious, beautiful and terrifying Black Canyon? So leaving this place is a little bit sad, but we know that big adventures are waiting just ahead. All right, so where does today's adventure lead us? We are heading to Mancos, Mancos, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say any of these, but it's near Mesa Verde National Park. It's about four hours from where we are now. But we do plan to make a detour and a tell you ride on the way there for a little bit of hiking and sightseeing. And our next Airbnb is a little bit different, right? Not a cabin this time, not a house. It, we're actually staying in a yurt. A yurt! It's pretty much like a big fancy tent, but with like a kitchen and a bathroom. And so we're excited. It'll be totally different. After being on the road for a while, we had to make a little pit stop at the smallest post office I've ever seen. If you remember from our trip to Ure, we got a bunch of postcards which the kids used to write to their grandparents, their cousins, their friends, and so we needed to mail those off and we had taken a boatload of footage at this point and so I got a hard drive to mail back to our editor. So we little post office. Dang. Guys, check it out. The post office had trip snacks. You kidding me right now? Gummies? Yeah. Cimarron Post Office, you're an absolute legend. 
As we journeyed on from the post office, we encountered a bit of rain, but it didn't bother us because as usual, the views of the mountains were breathtaking. Man, seeing those mountains just doesn't get old. So we're passing through a small town now and we're about an hour and 20 minutes from Telluride. The serene views could only be interrupted by, yes, you guessed it, an emergency potty break. Next time we stop at a gas station, you're going to the bathroom. So after our emergency excursion, we were quickly back on the road and once again taking in the views as we made our way to Telluride. Each kid found ways to content themselves as the drive stretched on, but eventually we started to close in on Telluride and things got more and more beautiful. Look at all the red rocks, aren't those pretty? They're so crazy, they're so red. And finally, after what felt like forever, we were entering the town of Telluride. Telluride is a beautiful ski town surrounded by the San Juan Mountains. And this area contains the highest concentration of 13 and 14,000 foot peaks in all of Colorado. Our plan for the day was to hike the Bridal Veil Falls Trail, and we were greeted with some pretty incredible views. This is Bridal Veil Falls, and at 365 feet, this is the tallest free-falling waterfall in Colorado. And as we arrived at the trailhead, we couldn't help noticing these emerald blue ponds. After some research, we found that these are settling ponds, which allow sediment and metals in the mine water from the mill level tunnel to gradually settle out of the water. And during the process, the water takes on these crazy vivid hues because of the minerals that are still suspended in it. So after taking in the views, we were ready to get geared up and go on a hike. Is the gray squirrel ready? Is the truck ready? Yeah. Boom. The hike to the top was only a couple of miles, but this is definitely one of the more technical hikes that we had done. This is genuinely one of the coolest trails I've ever walked. But the technical nature of this hike also makes it very fun and memorable. And this trail stood out as one of our favorite of the entire trip. Shortly after we started our hike, the clouds started coming in and it looked like we might get rained out. Crazy. That rain might be getting closer. Let's All right, let's go this way. We've got limited time. Hey, can we get a treat if everybody makes it to the top? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I want to so we get a treat and do a fun hike. The trail winds its way up the hill towards the base of the waterfall. And that means there's several moments when you get really close to the water. And if you can remember from our last video, we have an eight year old who really loves to get close to the water. What is it, Jude? This trail was half hike, half climb, and though it wasn't easy, it definitely stood out as one of our favorites. Hello, this is crazy. Oh, wow. And eventually we got to parts of this hike that felt like you had stepped into a scene on Lord of the Rings. You look like an elven princess, babe. Pull out your boat. Gotta stop for a truck break. Yeah, buddy! That was sick, bro! And after climbing about a thousand more rocks, we started making our way to the base of the falls. If you have one, why? It's gonna get wet. The closer we got, the muddier and wetter things got because of the constant spray from the falls. 
but eventually we made it to the lower falls and it was a sight to see. This is amazing, totally worth it. And on our way back down, the kids found something they'd been waiting to see this entire trip. Snow! Oh! oh my god! Ow, oh, my fingers! Oh my god! Oh my fingers! Oh! Oh my fingers! oh! Jude, throw it! Not at, at me. Daddy, you it with a rock. That's a damn good Cell phone. Hey. Two cell phones. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. You're crazy, man. <laughs> All right, we're finally gonna head back. Thankfully, it's only barely sprinkling. And on the way back down the trail, the kids went into gazelle mode and I was struggling to keep up. I'm doing my best to keep up, I really am, but they're practically like running down the mountain. They have so much energy. If you uh, ever get the chance, it's not a bad view out here, not a bad hike. All right, we survived it. The rain, the falls, everything. It's amazing, great job kids. Good job guys. So now we've got about an hour and a half to our next Airbnb and I think we're gonna take it pretty chill. After leaving Telluride, we journeyed on, and once again, we had our minds blown with the views of the mountains. Guys, look! For the next several hours, we drove through mountains and valleys, through rivers and forests, but eventually, we made our way into the small town of Mancos. <clears throat> I mean, Mancos. Surrounded by views of the La Plata Mountains on one side, Mancos is a beautiful small town with a very homey feel. And finally, we were closing in on our next Airbnb. All right, so it's been a long drive. Everybody's worn out, but we're closing in. We've come to the town that our next Airbnb is at. And we should be there really soon. And just when we thought we had driven on our last dirt road of the trip, we discovered that wasn't quite the case. Another dirt road. I have a knack for picking these places apparently. <laughs> Our last two Airbnbs were beautiful mountain cabins, but we chose this place knowing that it would be an entirely different experience. There she is. We have arrived in the land of the yurt. The first to enter the yurt. Oh, this is cool. One by one, they enter the yurt. All right, welcome to the yurt. This is a little different than our last two stays, but as you can see, there's a living area here with a couch, a chair, a rug, it's nice and cozy. And then if you come in a little bit further, we've got a nice little kitchen set up with a couple of bar stools, a full-size refrigerator, which is really nice if you're traveling, and everything you need if you wanna cook something. If you keep going further, we have a nice little dining area with seating for six, which is pretty impressive in a small yurt. And then all the way back, we have one of two bunk rooms. So we have four beds total for the kids, which is perfect and which is why we also picked this place. And then of course, there's the loft, which has a queen-size bed and a twin. I guess if you have, wanna have one of your kids sleep up there, which our kids thought was like the most awesome thing ever, pretty much. Can I sleep up here? Space is fine, I have to admit, and it is pretty cool to be able to see the stars through the dome at night or just have all the sunlight coming through like right now. It's a great little setup. So after exploring the yurt, I pulled back onto the dirt road, past the slug bug graveyard, past the farms and fields, and into the small town of Mancus, 
to pick up some delicious pizza. The next morning, we woke up bright and early as the sun was shining right into the yurt. So bright. <sighs> the kids were deep into their own imaginary games and mom was cooking up a delicious breakfast. And after everybody was filled up and fueled up, we were ready to load up and head out for today's adventure. To motivate our kids for the day's hike, I had a little deal for them. Pre-trip snack, you get one Oreo before hiking, two Oreos after hiking. You're up first, babe. All right, one Oreo each. Yes. Is it pumping you up? Is that giving you the energy you need, Asher? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Today's adventure would lead us to Mesa Verde National Park. The drive-in was full of scenic cliffside views that were pretty cool. Oh my gosh. I feel like it's worth it just for the drive in some of these parks. That's crazy. We're so high. And after a while of driving on the side of mountains, through cool tunnels, and even through a burned forest, we finally made it to the interior of the park, but we just had to find a parking spot. We made it. Hopefully we can find a spot, you know? We are in Made in the Shade, baby, babe. <laughs> Let's do this. Mesa Verde, 2023. That one is because everything will find So here, just a few hundred feet from one of America's oldest civilizations, we couldn't help ourselves and went for a potty break. That's what we're here for. Most people come for the sights, not us. We come for the national park restrooms. So after taking care of the most important things, we were ready to hike down the trail and check out the cliff dwellings of Mesa Verde. This is Spruce Tree House, and it's the third largest dwelling in the park. It houses 130 rooms and is said to be constructed around 1220 AD. The largest cliff dwelling in the park is known as Cliff Palace with over 150 rooms and could date back to as early as 1100 AD. But these aren't the only cliff dwellings in the park. There's actually over 600 of them total spread all throughout Mesa Verde National Park. So after taking in the cliff dwellings, we decided we wanted to go on a hike and actually put our feet on the side of the mountain, just like the ancients did it a thousand years ago. We went on a several mile loop in hopes of seeing some very ancient petroglyphs. And thankfully we brought along plenty of water because this is one of the driest and hottest parts of Colorado. And this trail was not for the faint of heart. It was often difficult, rocky, and even slippery at parts. So we're on Petroglyph Trail. It's kind of like hiking the side of a mountain. Um, so it's kind of like sloped at an angle, but there's lots of really cool rock formations, tree formations. And once again, we were struck by how unique and cool this trail was. It just had a different feel from anything we'd ever hiked before. So we're walking through this pinch point here. It's pretty cool. I'd say it's about, I don't know, two feet wide. Then you're out into the brilliant sunlight. This trail was basically a maze of rocks and staircases, but you were almost always walking under these giant rock outcroppings. So we're still just hiking on the side of this mountain. There's all these overhangs above us, which is really cool. And when you're surrounded with this kind of beauty, that's where the pokey little puppy does his best work. All right, Asher, we gotta keep going, buddy. But eventually we were back up and running and we actually saw a secret dwelling way up in the cliff. 
And surrounded by this kind of beauty, it inspires me to try new things. I know some people may not appreciate this, but I, I really want to try this. Yeehaw! That was crazy. Echo! Wow. <laughs> Hello, chicken! What does that even mean? As we journeyed on, this trail just got more and more dynamic. As we journeyed on in search of the ancient petroglyphs, we made some other important discoveries. Whoa, that's a behemoth. Look at Leo, look at Ash and Hicks. He's, he's trying his best, he really is. Ancient civilizations invented tic-tac-toe. This was the first Minecraft block. Minecraft was created by this ancient civilization and this is their first block prototype. Once you're getting towards the end of the hike, you're getting a little loopy in the head and you kind of got to find ways to entertain yourself, you know what I mean? But finally, after more than an hour of hot hiking, we came to the Mesa Verde petroglyphs. It was crazy to think that we were looking at a carving between four and 700 years old. But as usual, when faced with something of historical significance, kids will be kids. What is your reaction to these hieroglyphs? Kind of little. What do you think about those? I don't know. What do you think about these? I think there's a mountain goat ball. And it's hard to blame them. Kids aren't big on looking at things, but they are big on doing things. And thankfully, the most exciting part of the trail was just up ahead. So we've reached the trickiest, steepest part of the trail. Got to do climbing. It's all downhill from here. I'm, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's all uphill from here. This part of the trail definitely tested your skill and your nerve. Did you get video of that? That was terrifying. But it was a really fun climb and the views from the top made it all worth it. The final stretch of this trail was up on top of the mesa, which meant flatter walking, but also some really cool views. The views from up here are decent, you know? All right. But as cool as the views were, we were hungry for lunch. Everybody's eager to get back to the car because lunch is in the car. We're just blowing by all the sightseeing opportunities because uh, we have lunch in the car. And finally, after hiking a couple of hours in the heat, we had safely made it back. Uh, we've made it back home to the minivan. We've all learned a sandwich and a yogurt pack. Well done, kids. Whoa. Babe. Got it open. Who wants chips? There's chips on the dashboard. The spoils of hiking. But today's trip had one last surprise for us. And after a really big day, we finished things off by watching Mando. So we hope you've enjoyed coming along for this leg of our journey and you'll definitely want to stick around because in the next part of this series, we'll get cold with white water rafting and get really hot at the local hot springs. We'll stay at one of the coolest Airbnbs that we've ever stayed at and explore an epic waterfall. So until then, thanks for watching.